everybody. Welcome back to Trina's Humble Homestead, where we are diving into the world of herbal remedies. As I show you how to make a powerful elderberry and echinacea tincture using vodka. This tincture is packed with health benefits. Plus, I'll be straining two of my previous tinctures, Stinging Nettle and my Pain Tincture. So stick around for the final results. First, let's talk about our star ingredients, elderberry and echinacea. Elderberry is known for its immune boosting properties, and it is great for fighting off colds and flu, which is why I'm starting my tincture now. I want to have it ready for that cold and flu season. Echinacea, on the other hand, is fantastic for reducing inflammation, which you all know I'm always working on reducing that inflammation in my body. And it also enhances your immune response. So together they make a powerhouse combination. And for those of you who prefer a non-alcoholic option, you can easily make an elixir versus a tincture using organic raw, unfiltered apple cider vinegar. This will still give you the amazing benefits of the herbs without the alcohol. The only difference is with the vodka, which you want to make sure that you're using at least 80 proof, it does make a really potent tincture. So I use about, for me, I use a dropper. I use a dropper full for a child, which I would use like maybe a quarter of a dropper. But if you're using the apple cider vinegar and you don't want to use any alcohol with your children and stuff, which makes sense. I mean, a lot of the over the counter medications are based with alcohol. So that's kind of where the tinctures came about. But it makes sense if you don't have alcohol in your house, you don't want to have alcohol in your house, it's perfectly fine. You can do it with apple cider vinegar. The only difference is you might need to use like one tablespoon up to a quarter of a cup. So it's just a little bit of a of a, a difference in the amount, but you'll still get those great benefits of the herbs. So please go ahead and use it. Just whatever works out for your family, do it that way. Now let's make our tincture. So here's what you're gonna need. We're gonna take one cup of dried elderberries. So I'm gonna take one cup of dried elderberries. And then to that, I'm gonna take one cup of dried echinacea root. And I will put a link in the description of the dried herbs that I was purchasing before I grew my own. I don't grow all of my herbs. I, so some of them I do purchase or I have purchased on either Amazon or the personal web, webs. There are certain brands that I prefer, I just feel better about. Um, so I can link them in the description below. And then I keep them in a sealed jar or mylar bag, depending on how long I'm going to keep them. And I just vacuum seal them. And let me tell you, I went into my apothecary and I just saw that I have no more of this one. So I was like, oh my, I need to get this stocked up before I really need it because it was bone dry. So I definitely do take this one on the regular through the flu season and cold season. I like to take it at least three times a week, sometimes on the daily. And then I don't feel good. I take it three times a day. So I definitely like to take this one. So here is how I have these. To that, I add two cups of vodka. Now it says two cups of vodka, but the biggest thing is, ugh, sorry, I have to open it. The biggest thing is that we want to make sure it's covered. So let's see what two cups of vodka does. I should probably, it'd probably be easier if I just poured it in. So one, 
the recipe says two cups of vodka, but I have a feeling. I want to just show you. So here's what two cups of vodka does. So to me, let me show you what I like to have. Because I like to make sure everything is good and covered. Which is why I bought So I pretty much go like this to make sure everything's covered. So it's probably more like three cups of vodka. <laughs> and it's not for, you know, having the extra alcohol. It's more just you want your herbs to be all covered. That's the most important thing. So... And then we always want to make sure we label. So then we want to shake it. So for the first few days, we kind of want to give it a shake every day. We want to keep it in a dark. So I'm going to put on the cover here. I'm going to, I'm going to put elderberry and echinacea tincture. And then I'll put the date. So I put that in the, and then what I'll do is every day I'll just give it a little bit of a swirl and a shake just to get those, make sure they're all wet in there. And this, you want to make sure you leave it for at least four to six weeks. That's a good time to make sure it gets all of the stuff. I, I mean, I go up to six months. It just depends on when I need it. Like now I'm out of it. So probably four to six weeks, I'll probably strain it and, and take it out of there. But however, you know, anywhere from four to six weeks up to six months is a good time for a tincture. So that is how you make a tincture. And you can do it with that or an elixir is with the apple cider vinegar. I'm going to do that. The other thing I have is I have some alfalfa leaf. And I'm going to make a tincture with the alfalfa leaf too because the alfalfa is really good for allergies. So I have the alfalfa leaf. The other thing I have right here is I'm straining this stinging nettle. So this stinging nettle I grow in abundance in my herb garden. And stinging nettle, I have a video on the all of the benefits of that. I can link below. But stinging nettle is really good for allergies, a lot of things. It's super good. You can cook it and eat it. You can dry it and put it in your green powder and add it with that stuff. But here I made it as a tincture because during allergy season, I like to take a little bit every single day just to kind of help the allergies. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at, I don't, I mean, I have extra vodka. So I am going, and I already have my peen one. I, there's only like about three or four tinctures that I actually like to have throughout the year. So I'm going to make some alfalfa tincture and then the stinging nettle. And I like to have those just for allergy season. It's good for me. And my pain one I have, I'm going to strain that one out too. Here's the pain one. So this one, um, the pain one I do have in a tincture, like if I really am in a flare, but other than that, I also have the capsules. And the capsules, if I start feeling like I'm kind of in a lot of pain, I might take a couple um, capsules before I go to bed just to, you know, kind of help the ant in inflammation. And I also make the turmeric tabs. I can link those uh, playlists below or the videos below. So those, the turmeric with the ginger and all of those things are super good for anti-inflammatories. So I make those. So what we do is I strain out the tincture like this. And then I take, we always want a dark bottle. I can link below where I get, I get these on Amazon. Not hard to find. Do you hear scratching? That would be Nala. I went into the guest room to get this stuff out. And she just, that's where my granddaughter had stayed when she was here. So now she thinks she needs to go in there. So sorry about that, all this scratching at the door. But anyway, so I'm going to put that, I'm going to take that and put it in here. And then for me, honestly, I mean, if it was regular herbs, I would feed them to the chickens. But because it has alcohol in it, and I am just, I don't feel like having drunk chickens. I think that would be mean and cruel. I am just going to dump these. So... I will discard them. I normally don't like to waste anything, but because it has alcohol in it, I just, that's how I feel. I feel like I'm not wasting because I feel like I got, I'm getting some medicinal properties. So I'm just going to take a, and then I'm going to take this and just dump it. I'm going to go get a towel because I'm still making a mess. 
at least on the benefit, there's alcohol in here. So alcohol is great for cleaning. <laughs> so I, I'm just kidding. Trying to see the positive, right? Okay. So let's see if we can do this without making a huge mess. Nope, I can't. Y'all know how I cook. I just can't do it without making a mess. So there we go. All right, so this, look at, look at how much we got. It's almost full. So I need to find a label and then I'm gonna label, this one is stinging nettle or nettle tincture. And that, I will take a dropper or a little quarter of a teaspoon of this every single day during allergy season. I have been having a lot of allergy issues. Today I feel actually good, but during its harvest, so They've been harvesting the stuff out here, so I've been noticing some. So I'll probably take maybe a quarter of a teaspoon every single day, probably up till frost, to be honest. So that's how I will do that. So I got that. Now, for the next one, my pain one here, just here, I will link the video. I'll look for it and link. try to link it. I will try, I'll be honest. I'll try to link the one below how I made this pain one because it has, it has like valerian root, it has echinacea, it has a bunch of, echinacea has the anti-inflammatory properties. So what I do when I strain this one because it was had so many herbs in it, I just kind of take a wood spoon and I try to, oh, sorry, get as much of the liquid out as I can. And then you see, this is a lot less. So this, the pain one, because it's not one that I use a lot. It's one I use when I'm really in a flare. So I, I just have a small bottle of this and then I'll fill that up same way with the, with the thing. And that's how I have it. So just make sure all of these are in a nice, cool, dark place. I have like a, a cabinet that I keep them in. And you just don't want them at a warm, a really hot temperature. And then they, can last pretty much indefinitely or at least for I mean I go through them probably in about two or three years but yeah they're they're really a great benefit my goal is to get off of all medication so especially you know like I've had to take ibuprofen um, I am on some heart medication still but I've really decreased it a lot so, you know, just using natural forms of medicine and herbs and trying to grow my own herbs. What I can't grow, I try to buy organically. Yes, I'm just trying to use natural medicine. So if any of this helps you, that is the goal. The one thing with herbal remedies is it's not an instant relief. Sometimes when you do a tincture, it does help give you some relief immediately, but with herbal remedies sometimes it's it's a process it's you know doing it daily working on your gut health it's it's the whole system together all right so have any of you made tinctures what kind of tinctures have you made please let me know in the description below and what things do you do for natural medicine I would love to hear. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for watching. Be blessed. Have a great day. And don't forget you are loved.